All right, so I had a question about, uh, about cross-sections through the models. Of course, everything you see on, on the video is coming through the, uh, the plexiglass sidewall. You can do cross-sections. It's really unpleasant. Uh, this model has been, been saturated with a gelatin solution, uh, just regular unflavored gelatin. Uh, I get it at a Kroger grocery store here in, here in Blacksburg, Virginia. It smells bad. Not a lot of fun to work with. Uh, probably put six of these packets, which are, gosh, I don't even know how much. Each one of them weighs. We'll find that out. So they are one, one fourth, one fourth ounce. Uh, and you could convert that to, to grams if you wanted to. I can't do it right now. Uh, at any rate, probably put, maybe six of these packets, five or six of these packets into every liter of water that you're gonna be using. A model of this size needs a liter to a liter and a half of, of solution to be saturated. But put the gelatin in the water, heat it up uh, pretty close to boiling. Uh, you want it really hot because you don't want it gelling while you're trying to get it to soak into uh, the deformed section. Uh, before you pour the gelatin solution into it, you have to cover it with, with post-kinematic sand. That's what all this is. Just regular old sand, not the colored stuff. Uh, actually, un, totally untreated sand is the best. This is play sand. It's been treated to make it less dusty. Uh, the dusty stuff works even better. It, it sort of pulls the solution into the model and distributes, or distributes it really well. It's, uh, it's really just to protect the top of the model from, from the actual impact of the, the gelatin solution you're pouring into it. But once you've soaked the model, uh, I like to leave it for you know probably a, an hour or so or an hour and a half. Uh, you don't want to get impatient here because even though the top may feel like it's gelling and drying inside, things are still very much uh, wet and very easily damaged. Um, about halfway through this one, uh, it's probably been two hours, maybe two and a half hours since I actually poured the solution into this model. Once you get to this point though, uh, just got like a, like a box cutter hobby knife here. I try to make sure that the section is removed or, or sort of detached from the high friction base plate here, which is just a, it's just a piece of sandpaper. Uh, this is one of the, one of the duplex models, like one of the window and clipping models that, uh, sort of a smaller version of the one that, that recently uploaded. Uh, it's using the sandblast beads as a decomont horizon. To get that decomont to activate, you got to have high, high friction on the base here. And it's pretty coarse sandpaper, probably about 150 grit. So be sure that the section's not stuck to that. That's the first step here. And again, you want your model to, to already be hardening uh, before you actually try to do this. So I'm going to be sure it's very well detached there. Once I've done that step, I'm actually going to cut a slice here, and I would I would say uh, you know it's a centimeter or so. Uh, thinner is better. The reason that thinner is better, at least with these sort of mixed media models here, is that sometimes the the drying can be uneven when there's a variety of materials used. If you get uneven drying, you get cracking, particularly along the contacts between the different layers. Uh, for that reason, you want the model to dry as quickly and as, as uniformly as possible. You want the slices to dry as, as quickly as possible. And that's why I'm trying to trying to keep them pretty thin here. It'd be very nice if you could get sort of a big a big block, sort of a geologic map looking thing. And you can do that with with a pure sand model like this one. Uh, if it's if it's pure sand it's going to soak a lot easier with the solution, and it's also going to dry very quickly and, and very evenly. Uh, in this case, I've got actually this flour and cornmeal mixture here, which is my slightly cohesive, sort of rigid, strong horizon, and that's a real pain to have, have dry with sand. But that's fine. seems to be working out here, so check it one more time. It's not stuck to the sandpaper. So we're good and good and separated there. All right, made our cut to, to sort of free this slice from the rest of the model. Now this is kind of the hard part. 
I guess it's all sort of a hard start with this, but use a thin, just a thin plastic ruler. I just have a lot of these laying around and buying for classes. Uh, any type of, of thin sort of sheet of plastic, I'll slide that into the cut that I just made. And that's going to sort of separate the slice, rest of the model. And here I'm using uh, a presently unused plexi sidewall. And now I can sort of pinch this slice against my plastic ruler and rotate it away from the rest of the model there. So now I've got at this point a very rubbery uh, and, and undried slice of a pretty interesting model. Uh, hopefully this will, will continue to dry smoothly and sometimes at this point I'll try to I'll try to scrape and trim them up a little bit, dress them a little bit. That usually goes better once, once they're completely dry. Once this has totally dried, which will probably take a couple days to dry completely, uh, you can actually sort of scrape at it with a hobby knife that you don't plan to use again because, of course, the sand will, will immediately kill the edge on there. And you can dress this up and get a very nice surface, which you could then lacquer or varnish or, or whatever you like. But that's how it goes. We've got six of them done already. Probably four or five more, and of course you lose the little bit that's right against the sidewall there. But it's pretty interesting as a, as a way to preserve these and take a look at what's inside and see if that structural style actually matches uh, what you're seeing against the sidewall there. So back to it here, and uh, next day or two, probably going to tackle the bigger one up here. Uh, that will require you know, probably three, three liters or so of solution, probably 15 gelatin packets, and that will be uh, certainly an all-day affair uh, to take care of that one. So it's worth a shot uh, to try to do this if you use a variety of media, but if you're doing models that are entirely sand, go for this, bury them with a centimeter or two of regular uncolored junk sand, whatever you have laying around, soak them with the gelatin and slice them up, and you'll have a, you'll have a pretty interesting... Uh, piece or sort of souvenir, if you will, of the, uh, the model you did.